Hello and good evening to our respective speakers and my fellow mates. I am Kudisha, serving as a moderator on behalf of Sniper Guwahati, Vision Bharati, and NECM. Welcome you all in our second day of first session on health management and disease control. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. I will request all my uh, fellow mates to please mute your mic. and off your webcam so that we can avoid any inconvenience during the presentation also if you have any question during the presentation please type them in chat box i will bring them up during the question answer session now without any further ado i would like to invite our uh, our speak our esteemed speaker enthusiastic insightful and a great academic academician Dr. U S N Murthy sir. Dr. U S N Murthy sir is the director and chairman of Bionet Birak D V T Government of India, National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, under Department of Pharmaceutical Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers, Government of India. Dr. U S N Murthy has done M S C from Andhra University in 1980 and P S D from Osmania University in 1990. He started his research career in WHO center Pondicherry in 1981 followed by Central Secretarial Research and Training Institute Mysore in 1982 He joined in CSIR IICT in 1984 as a scientist B rose to the level of chief scientist in head biology division His research area interests are biotechnology, toxicology, bioinformatics, integrated vector, control and disease modeling, and public health. Published more than one. He published more than one sixty papers in peer-reviewed journals, contributed ten chapters, and edited three books. I would request all of you to please mute your mic. Twelve scholars received PhDs under his supervision, and another five are awarded to name few WHO T uh, uh, and five are awarded to name two WHO TDR. German uh, is the recipient of many national and international awards. to name few who tdr german research foundation us defense icmr biomedical research award and dr murthy is visiting professor in york university canada university of hyderabad he was holding the position of in charge director of csir iict hyderabad project director and dean of national institute of pharmaceutical education and research hyderabad and director of officiating Nipper, uh, he was also the director of Nipper Mohali. Presently, he is the founder director of Nipper Guwahati, where he established four national centers and secured top 11 ranks in NUP 2020 within a short span of time. Science popularization is his new passion. Sir, with due regards, we welcome you to give an insightful session to all our uh, viewers. Sir, we welcome you. Sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Ankur, for the elaborate uh, introduction. And uh, Thank you, sir. it is a wonderful uh, occasion to speak. Use the ideal time in a potential manner to exchange some of the things up from the respective organizations so that networking can be established so successfully. Without taking much time, let me go to my topic that is uh, on the how the disease health management can be done. Are you able to see my presentation? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
Okay, my topic is on integrated disease management, an innovative approach at Naipur Gauhati. If you see the disease spectrum in India, unfortunately, more than 50% of the contributions from the infectious diseases alone. Rest on the things like connective tissue, um, around 11%. And neoplastic 7%, and most another dangerous situation is 24% unidentified diseases, including corona. This is not there earlier in the history. Now it has come, it is under the category of unidentified disease. That means it is giving an alarm that out of 24%, corona is one of the diseases, but still, how many unidentified diseases are there? This is a grand challenging problem before all of us. Next thing, if you see, Government of India has started health policies based on the health progression as well as disease progression also. The first step 1999, before actually during 80s, we don't know what is AIDS. We don't know actually what is the biology of AIDS and we never even heard about it. Ever since it has come in an ugly head and playing the dance in the public health, then it was become a serious menace. 1999, Government of India started National AIDS Control Program, followed by National Rural Health Mission in 2005. That means Government of India has classified the diseases prevalent in rural area, prevalent in the urban diseases. That is why there is a urban mission. Later on, I will tell. 2005 National Health Rural Mission is established. After three years, Rashtriya Swastaka Bhima Yojana, this is started. After two years again, 2010, prevention and control of cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and stroke as well. Because stroke is also contributing immensely as far as the mortality is concerned in the Indian continent. <clears throat> Janani Shishu Suratha Kadyakram. This is, in fact, mortality is also very high in India. Especially this scheme is only for uh, take care of the mother health as well as infant health during pregnancy, after pregnancy. In 2012, WHO removed, this is a flagship program of India. I want many diseases should be removed from the WHO list. This is the first one and from the endemic countries, the list, the polio was eliminated. That means WHO recognized India is the polio free country. We wanted to see in the years to come, India is free from the all infectious diseases, both communicable and non-communicable. In 2014, as I told you earlier, National Urban Health Mission was started. Next thing, we need to have a health policy every year so that it is a periodical review what is need to be done in the coming in coming year based on the past experiences better as well as better. Aishman Bhava, I think this is another flagship program that has come in 2018. These are all the health policies which will monitor the, both the infectious diseases and communicable and non-communicable periodically. And if you see another disease spectrum, unfortunately, till 1990s only two categories, communicable and non-communicable. For the past 10 years, we are hearing, apart from these two, rural diseases, urban diseases, emerging diseases, re-emerging diseases, orphan diseases, these are all the things we never heard and it is a, now time has come where we have to think seriously how to come out of this, from the clutches of the dreaded diseases. If you see the potential ICT, information and communication technology to improve the healthcare, we have 
60 more than 65 percent of 1100 billions are literates in this country of course this is a little bit to all the statistics now percentage is much more better more than 60 percent of rural india has access of tv coverage four lakhs villages are already having telephone connections Mobile users in India are very high. I don't want to give the statistics because by the time the recording the statistics and my presentation, the number is doubling, the number is increasing like anything. Of course, same story in the case of internet users are as well. Several millions are there. Our health sector in India in three types system. One is primary. From the primary level, public health point of view, that means government point of view, PHCs are established, primary health care centers and primary health care units, PHC and PHU. This is the primary health care from government side. If you see the private side primary health care system, mostly they are depending on the traditional medicines and non-scientific methodologies, which are not supposed to be. Come to the secondary level, District hospitals from the public side, from the private side, private clinic and small nursing homes. This is our structure. When you go to the top level tertiary, we have teaching government teaching hospitals. For example, Gauhati Medical College, one of the good old medical college established in English government time, the Brugger. These are all the things, example, from the northeastern side. Of course, there are many colleges. From private side, private clinics, nursing homes, most important is the corporate hospitals. This is the ICT versus Indian health structure in three-tier system. See, 1973 expected life at birth is 45 to 60. When it comes to the 2013 exponential growth, exponential growth, it has gone from 45 to 70, that is 2013. That means in another seven years by two now, I think it might have gone to between 70 to 75. Why this has happened? Earlier plague comes, there is no medicine, he has to die. Earlier any cancer comes, now we are prolonging the longevity. It may not be in a position to completely control it, but we are in a position to manage it because of the excellent drug development programs in India. So, expectation of life at birth rate EC, it has really gone up because of the various drugs available for the dreaded diseases. Let me tell you a classification between the mortality and morbidity. Morbidity means disease rate, mortality means death rate. You see the malaria and all these chota chota things will be contributing only 1%, 2%. The acute diarrheal is only 22%. That is, I am talking about the morbidity, disease rate. When you come to the mortality, pneumonia is contributing. Acute respiratory infection. You please focus on this slide. In both the morbidity, it is 69%. The dreaded disease of COVID also will be fallen under this category. That means right from the beginning, how we are fighting with the respiratory infections because of various uh, elements, whether it is an environmental or unexpected thing or a mutated virus or mutated pathogens and so on. What is the health information system? Why we have to talk about the information now? This is the time we are living in the information era. How information is passing from health point of view? We are able to identify five subsectors in the HIS, health information system. This is called NHM, HMIS, that means National Health Mission, under that Health Management Information System. Second one is IDSP, this is a continuous process, Integrated Disease Surveillance Program. If it is a stat, it is not a static program, it is a highly dynamic in nature, so that we will know in nook and corner of places, what kind of unpredictable diseases are coming up. That is the main aim of the IDSP. The third sector is Nikshaya. This is the Hindi word. Ni means no. That means nothing. Shaya means TV. This is a title given from the Rajabhasha of India by government of India. 
that means eradication of tuberculosis there is a separate health information system most important i already told you mother and child tracking system mcts strategic information management system sims sim see under mcts mother and child tracking system there are two partners one is direct involvement another is indirect involvement direct involvement means mostly clinic clinicians and uh, paramedical staff will be there in this but indirect involvement is nutritional support icmr has got very very good old laboratory national institute of nutrition in hyderabad um they will give they have got one kind of a one chart during third month pregnancy what kind of food should be taken during fifth month pregnancy what should you when the child grows what kind of nutritional support should be given to that mother once after delivery what kind of nutritious food should be given to the kid also the child also apart from the mother's will this is a beautiful chart given by the icmr nim that is a mcts last but not least district health information system that means from the district itself they will consolidate from mandal um, village village to mandal mandal to district this is the information passing the hierarchy so this is the one as far as health information system is concerned now central bureau of health intelligence i think most of the people are not aware of this but north east is also well established infrastructure is there if any case is reported to health bureau of health intelligence it will directly go from arunachal nook and corner to the central server located in the ministry of health and family welfare it was established in 1961 the health intelligence is actually wing of the director general of health services in the ministry of health and family welfare government of india <laughs> a strong health management information system in entire country that is the one uh, with a powerful network called a simple uh, html page is already designed structured by the government nothing actually even one degree or maximum uh, plus two can it also can enter the report generation system i can say report generation system about the diseases now i think i want to draw your attention here ministry of in uh, electronics and information technology mighty government of india in 2002 i think yes uh, they have established cic community information system community information centers in north east india in 30 blocks including sikkim it was inaugurated by then prime minister shri manmohan ji on 17th august and initially at that time 457 community information centers centers were there now i think they have gone up to the 550 assam is the state which has got more cics compared to other northeastern states why i am telling all those things i will let you know in a later part of presentation later the same facility is extended to other hilly areas like jammu kashmir in 2004 andaman nicobar 2005 in community information system aim is a citizen interface for the it enabled e government services and training it is a multi purpose kiosk i can say which is a well established information technology center where even housewives also can do distance education degree programs and also you can communicate to the concerned health authorities about the illness in and around of the particular village it is not fully exploited because most of the people are not aware about their cics since already infrastructure is there it is our primary duty to report the uh, cases and all through the rmp doctor to the particular center so that it will go to the concerned health department or the phc level phq level as well as the district level let me say the strength of the biomedical research in india we are blessed to have heterogeneous population of almost 1.3 billion different ethnic groups 
Indo Gama is a tribal population. I, of course, one third of the tribal populations are, of total India are harbored in Northeast itself. That means highly conserved gene pool. Scientists who are working in the Northeast, it is a gold mine for them to see the resistant and susceptible mechanism. In, for example, an infection comes in a community, some people are resistant, some people are susceptible. What is the reason? It is nothing but some kind of a uh, that is a immunity system that can be studied by having your own um, biotechnological methods. For example, conserved gene pool, you can easily study a lot of things, why resistance is there in the body, why the susceptibility is there in another body of the same community from the same region. And if you see 1.5 lakh subcenters are there, PHU, PHC, 25, 23,000 primary health care centers, more than 4,000 community health centers, 1,600 urban family welfare centers. As far as education is concerned, 544 medical colleges and apart from that, 64 PG institutions of medical education, 400 research institutes, 789 universities, 12,000 hospitals and 15,000 diagnostic laboratories. More than 50 R&D laboratories in public sector, more than 200 in government sector. That means our intellectual infrastructure is excellent apart from the actual infrastructure. Now, this is a budging word, artificial intelligence. How we can do it? How NIPER is involved in the artificial intelligence techniques? Integrated information system to interpret, integrate and mitigate the cardio metabolic health in Northeast tribal population of Assam and Mizoram. A study is taken recently by my department, one of my departments, pharmacy practice. It is funded by ICMR. What is the integrated information interpretation? First of all, collection, collation, and interpretation. These are the three fundamental steps in any computer programs in order to der derive the problem, come to a logical conclusion. We wanted to see what are all the associated factors of the promoting the cardio metabolic health. So that's why we wanted to collect the comorbid factors, integrate them first. Interpretation is very important. The interpretation will be done by only domain people. Computer will never do anything here. Our computer experts also will never do. And finally, they will come into the picture at the time of analysis. They will learn from the domain person what is an expected outcome. Then they will do with the either established algorithm or any invented algorithm. And they will come out with the mitigation technique. It can identify the risk in the tribal population well in advance and help to design a mitigation plan some kind of a short term advance program. That means there are a forecasting is also two types. One is short term forecasting, second one is the long term forecasting. So in the cardio metabolic, because cardio metabolic means if anything comes, he will die very quickly. If you give long term forecasting, it is of no use. That's why we are planning to give an alarming system to the health authorities of the concerned zone in a short term way. What you are going to do in one week time, otherwise patient will collapse. There is a deep learning assessment, we call it as a machine learning assessment for identification of the novel, identification of the novel diagnostic and prognostic biomarkers for prediction of the diabetic retinopathy. This is another important. You know that once diabetes comes, it will affect the any organ, vital organ in, in the part of the body. As far as the retinopathy is concerned, we join hands with the Shankar Deva Nepralaya and how to give some kind of a advanced forecasting system in the particular subject. By using machine learning tools, we can identify the biomarkers for early detection of the diabetic retinopathy and the results are really encouraging. We have developed uh, many databases and we used data mining techniques including association rules, um, priority rules. Out of all this, since you to pass it over time, I will just take out one or two examples of our contribution, in especially vector bond diseases. See, if you see this particular one, we have developed a database on the malaria in Arunachal Pradesh by taking one state as an example, but this can be used for the rest of the states as well. 
we will develop a model based on the uh, arunachal pradesh data and i want to draw your attention in the vector borne diseases there are two types one is entomology data second one is epidemiology data in unfortunately in entire northeast government of india don't have the entomological data that means you already lost one hope only second hope is only epidemiological data that is the thing everywhere we have come some kind of a setbacks in control of the dreaded diseases so what to do then say the whatever things are there you please take that data and try to use the machine learning algorithms and first of all the first and foremost to develop the database you see the right side one database for the arunachal pradesh of course for the file areas it is asked by the nicd national institute of communicable diseases we have developed and given to them third one is the japanese encephalitis you see the disease spectrum it was not there in before 80 in assam but now it is coming up it is all but um, there is some kind of a hope it is not a periodical once in a two years only it will come japanese encephalitis it will not come every year like malaria so what are all the environmental factors governing this what are the secondary host for this how to identify the particular virus to prevent the disease otherwise assam will become again uttar pradesh or where japanese encephalitis is having heavy mortality now i am going to as i told you in the previous slide i am going to touch upon only one or two expert system for identification of the particular insect this particular anopheles species is predominant in the northeastern region identification of the correct vector will give a correct control planning methodology wrong identification leads to the thorough failure of the programs this is the standard methods in any when it comes to the covid also you have to identify what is the exact parameter promoting the covid i mean i am telling you maybe difficult in this covid but i am telling this is the one so for identification it is a very difficult taxonomy is already gone into the history that is why we wanted to protect that one through expert system for example this is the package we have developed let me go directly to the, this is the one transfer to assam mizoram and manipur within 20 seconds a person with minimum knowledge in the biological science can identify that means once you develop a technology it should be user friendly low cost adaptable applicable approachable Um, and adaptive means it in a single process the system also which would be able to port it and disseminate it mm-hmm. for example let me tell you the identity we talk about the wing actually wing is without pale color with the pale color it is asking that is the step one if you say it is without pale color it will ask you next legs legs without pale color right one and left one is a bit pale color if you click this one then your species is identified the species is identified as anopheles variantis that means how much time you took for the identification not even 10 seconds in some species it will go up to the 30 seconds but out of 53 anopheles species in india eight are vectors identification will never cross 30 seconds that means two parameters are enough to identify from the uh, different heterogeneous species anopheles variances is anopheles variances this is an expert system beauty the same technology can be used for the identification of plants microbes and proteins we have done it for the proteins also metlothion proteins also we have done it this is different issue but algorithm is very old algorithm let me tell you id3 algorithm this is invented by bremen one stanford university biostatistics professor in 1980 but we are not bothered about the age of algorithm we are bothered about the application of the algorithm so this is an application patent of course it is a copyright now you see malaria monitoring and visualization system we have taken the from the gis mapping and used the data put it by using the data mining techniques imposed on the what do you call the maps and all i have classified into three zones red zone violet color and green zone green zone means api annual parasitic index is very very less the red zone means it is very high that means what government officials has to do they have to go to that red zones and treat it on war foot basis rather than going to the green zone it doesn't mean that green zone should be neglected but prioritize this is an application from the ict most important thing i want to draw your attention self organizing map application for malaria control in arunachal what is self organizing map it is a two dimensional cluster 
you see if the right side below that the 0 to 1 the data is completely normalized from even if you have um, the 1000 or 10000 in figures that can be normalized through a principle that lies between 0 to 1 this can be applied even for the biotechnology even for the efficacy of any drug and all by self organizing map now let me uh, explain the outcome of this one for example you go to the cluster here wherever you have it one one axis is the parameter annual parasitic index annual falciparum index and blast plasmodium falciparum percentage that means in right side is the top right side of the block is villages for example pasi ghat is there in pasi ghat plasmodium falciparum is very very high compared to api that means you have to go to Pathy Ghat immediately in Arunachal Pradesh, give the drug administration indiscriminately without any age or gender or place. You have to give that one. That means this is self organizing map giving one kind of a uh, hint to you to go to this particular village. I am giving the beauty of the program is village level control it is giving. My pharmacy practice division can certainly look into it, how best this can be applied. Of course, this is the contribution from the, from the department only, but I want to extrapolate to the rest of the diseases, and this is an open access uh, software available with us. We only think little customization is required. If any institute is interested in self organizing map, Naipar Gauth is ready to coordinate and cooperate with them for giving a solution for any kind of a disease. Now you see how beautifully we have classified Another one is the Basins Network. This is a Basins Network is one of the major branch of data mining as well as artificial intelligence. These are all the whatever you are seeing, the irrigation, agriculture land, because this particular insect will breed only in the rice fields. This will not breed unlike malaria, malaria, one in a general thing. That is why you have to take care of the agriculture field, rainfall, wind speed, and all these things will finally to see the last one per man hour density. That means the density of the insect is depending on the various factors by basins and network. This paper we have published in Applied Artificial Intelligence. This is one beauty. Of course, till now the basins network is maximum user in the insurance sector and banking sector. But whereas in especially VBD, vector bound diseases, we are the pioneers in using that one because we have the Patients network is known in the Yes, we were crosses, they are taking not less than six to seven tablets. And by using this personalized medicine through pharmaco engineering technology, and one can reduce the number, it is nothing but like a salt, like a slow release formulation. And already Naipar Kahoti has developed some techniques and uh, come out with some solutions for the various diseases. I am also happy to share that this is only the first national center in the entire Asia. The first center in, in the world established in the national um, North Carolina, University of North Carolina in Asia. This is the first center. And we wanted to have the interdepartmental as well as intra-departmental collaboration. This is very, very important. And yesterday, we, you might have heard about the talk of Professor Sita Raman from IIT Kauti. Uh, he was talking about the what do you call this exchange program 
and uh, network excellence net network excellence so we have to take the benefit of others and give your benefits to others now naipur gahot is very seriously working with mechanical engineering department of iit gahot on 3d printing now let me come to the another center ministry of tribal affairs they have given center of excellence pharmacy practice division is doing lot of good work in the center i will tell you what are they whatever why our uh, pharmaceutical products are not being accepted in western countries only thing some hitch is that quality assurance and quality control we wanted to give that that particular stamp to the products from this northeast region so that they can go to the my ambition is not too much about the western countries at least let them go to the bangladesh nepal and bhutan we have already started working with the bhutan in nearly four five formulations my quality control and quality assurance department is very active in giving one kind of a certification to them because the product is exclusive for the gastroenteritis problem in bhutan so this center is going to come up with many many results very shortly it is given by ministry of commerce and the tais program National Phytopharma Mission of the Department of Biotechnology they have identified Naipur Gauhati as a good manufacturing practice institute and we wanted to make that 25 kilos of the raw material whether it is a bark or a plant or a seed or a fruit whatever it is there into the 1.25 kilos of the refined fine product that can go directly to the market that means during the process gmp not only will take care neighbor will be a part in it into the quality control quality assurance and safety of the pharmacology toxicology as well mode of action in the system gmp is over another center by donor recently it is given glp facilitated animal breeding after 1999 onwards that there are some legal implications on the animal usage if you see that from that time onwards the vaccine production has come down drastically only one vaccine center is there in kashauli himachal pradesh we have closed it when you don't have animal research center animal breeding center extensive animal usage for your respective drug discovery programs how can you come out how can you combat how can you tackle with this kind of a threat disease the yeah, drug development you are in the rock bottom level one side this disease spectrum is going up to the unexpected level so in that case we have been given animal breeding center facility to be established in naipur gauhati by donor soon this center will supply the quality to animals and uh, for effective drug development programs to the in principle to the northeastern academic as well as r and d institutes followed by to the rest of the country see so far you heard about the gmp good manufacturing practice second thing is glp good laboratory practice now naipur gahoti is very actively into the gpp good pharmacy practice in this particular study will give a training to the retail pharmacist see dosage is very important in pharmacy drug abuse we have to supposed to take care under pharmaco vigilance so in that case how to train the retail pharmacist based on the body weight is 6 milli for example one tablet is the anti nematode dietyl carbamazine 6 mg per kg body weight are you really giving the 6 mg per kg weight kg per kg body weight or not that is that means quality is means not only quality control people should come into the picture quality should be there in your first of all mindset itself whether you are giving the exact dose or not first of all you have to take see so we have we have periodically important training to the local pharmacists and how to give how to take care of the patient how to give the <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Very good background music. Excellent. I think I hope everyone can refresh it. Some kids voice. Okay. Now, good pharmacy practice is the part of our regular activity along with the GMP, GMP, GPP is also an integral part. Now, we are see community participation is very, very important. Our Naipur Gauth is very active in conducting the health camp. 
awareness program for tribal population under the heading of the center of excellence how to take precautionary measures at a community level that is very very important i think yesterday i spoke that the community participation will reduce the 30% of the case number of cases at least 30% when you convert into the number of actual cases it is huge number that itself is a great contribution to both the make community as a part in the control you have to give awareness about the disease first of all take care yourself and take care your next family members take care of the community that itself is the definition of the you can see what is community participation in the who tdr uh, document which is available on the public domain most important thing is sniper is very seriously looking at the making the skill into the pill skill into the pill skill development program for weaker sections of scst students from northeastern region this is also part of the tribal programs right from handling of the animals biology students only we will take some time and try how to handle how to handle the animals he will get at least 22 to 25000 rupees job in any animal house that is my worry that is my intention so we have conducted periodical this is a highly dynamic program keep on giving um, what you call the training in the animal handling dosage injections and even small in vitro experiments these are all the things we are giving i think you can see in a at a glance and all so we are mostly into the national mission pradhan mantri jan aushadhi yojana i think we are the part of the inauguration of the go down of janoshadi which is located in the entire entire north east there is only one janoshadi go down established in uh, uh, near gashuk gohati and where minister mansukh ji is connected that the go to the bhavi janoshadi to naipur gohati we wanted to reassure the quality control quality assurance we will also get some money from the government so that i wanted to give some 30% of my budget back to the ministry to show that we are also partially self sufficient apart from that we are also part in the national missions which is a proud to our initiative we have got one uh, we are into the natural birds let me tell you some scientific things a plant belongs to laraceae which has shown excellent antioxidant activity and we are most into the product development rather than publications and patents of course patent will be the first step on this later on we are going for the product development it is showing excellent antioxidant activity and the government of assam ayurvedic college also they have submitted their samples for us for the reverse pharmacology they have got one product where they made one arthritis person who is unable to walk they made him to walk by the product within 3 weeks time but there is no license for that because there is no first step Uh, data that first step is clinical pre clinical data is not there now they have come and requested us to generate the data all my pharmacology toxicology team is excellently working for giving the uh, certificate to them not to in the paper certificate but scientific support for that so that they can go to the a plus b pre clinical and clinical they will go to the c c is nothing but a market product another one we have given a code and this is also a arunachal pradesh plan which is showing anti bacterial anti inflammatory anti malarial anti cancer anti oxidant my interest is mostly anti malarial because north east malaria is considered as a endemic throughout the year that is why 100% subsidy will be given from the government of india for rest of the states like andhra telangana maharashtra 50% budget will be given another 50% should be met from the state government budget because that is not a continuous endemic zone whereas all north eastern parts are declared by government as a endemic for malaria because of only two things one is plasmodium falciparum vector is anopheles minimus second vector is anopheles dirus how to do the both the things here it is up to the government to take care but from our side we have to develop some innovative drugs for this and you to you know that doxorubicin is the for the general drug for using the cancer but it has got the second effect on the cardio toxicity you do we have got one more plan from the northeast region belongs to the dial nation this will reduce the cardio toxic activity if you see the high frequency ultrasonography this is only the instrument in northeast available with naipur uh, kahote i request any participants who are other than naipur can come and use it because we are excellent in working poor in sharing that should not be with naipur kahote those are always open for effective and potential collaboration this is the <clears throat> brightness mode 2d image 
and it provides the data you see the heart rate overall 2d image and all how it is almost near to the control when the drug is given when the product natural product is given at the rate of 200 mg per kg body weight almost similar to the control i am not over claiming i am only claiming if you see the second one ah uh, second one is the motion mode also same results here you see the control anterior layer and posterior layer both are thin and in the my below the just below that same thing is there but not like a disease control posterior layer the second layer is thickness is very high compared to this natural products given the layer one i this may not be totally like control but it's definitely it is not like a this is control one so this is giving some kind of an encouraging results let us go to the uh, i let me make it may from the earlier diagram you may not be able to quantify it if you see this one we have given a graph also the distance between the two layers in the disease control as well as this one there is a clear cut this elevated t wave is there on the top now that has come after giving this 200 mg of the product drug normal t wave has come down this shows this side effects of the drugs also can be drastically reduced by the local phytopharmaceuticals so th- this is our primary duty to bring out the built in facilities and built in talent of the plant with our talent and give it to the society if you see the pulse wave mode also this is same. first you see the extreme left uh, diagrams you see the blood flow and all how it is the velocity acceleration blood flow conspicuously is coming we compared to the disease control this is the beauty of this product now the same thing i have explained in the clear cut diagram ejection fraction stroke volume cardiac output and heart rate there is a significant impact of this plant on the reduction of the side effects of the particular drug we have got with the help of iasst dr talukdar and we have conducted traditional hela summit in naipur gavati campus where at present we have almost 120 samples with that all my faculty made it into three groups one group is looking after the pharmacological aspect same group is looking after the um, safety aspect another group is looking after the quality control and third group is quality assurance as well as how to take this one to the market that is three groups are very seriously working on this this is our societal programs and outreach programs as a part of our regular research now <clears throat> let us come to the talk of the town mitigation of the covid 19 menes and the contributions of naipur gavati i think march 14th this covid has been declared as a pandemic and now i think it is touching the 1 crore today latest statistics it is 1 crore across the world that is i am talking about the morbidity i am talking the morbidity but thank god due to the long incubation like daily 14 days and there is a lot of chance for recovery assam is also one of the very good states as far as the recovery percentage is concerned that means it is competing with the other very well known states and all whether development well developed states this is the recovery from assam we have to appreciate the ministry of health government of assam for the better recovery but ever since this uh, is coming up with uh, doubling figures for every periodical time what is our contribution naipur gavati has come out with a 3d printed facial shields it's a uh, one and it will give some kind of a protection i think you can see my second year students of the pharmaceutics department mr tushar he is from silchar assam the boy with the help of under the supervision of dr sohan benerji pharmaceutics department they have come out with this first physical arrest of this program see there are three control measures mechanical control biological control and chemical control we do, we will look into it all the three later first whatever the control measure is available immediately to be used is an important the interesting features are it is highly accuracy transparent easy to design rapid development prototype development deployment affordable and low cost i always tell whatever technology you develop it should be low cost easy to wear anti microbial face shield this is the one immediately he has come out we have handed over some packets to our honorable minister hemant biswas sharma ji 
and now this is going to be taken up he already taken up by one uh, this is one more thing the red one is a another one which without touching the electrical switches as well as the handles of the doors you can use it this is a 3d printed one also so most important thing is whatever i showed that that is version 1 this is version 2 multi layered mask actually this is the earlier one is the shield this is a mask see earlier one can be used in the paramedical staff and outside when you go to the intensive care unit by doctors when they are in the operation or surgery they can use it there is no question of inhalation or exhalation problem while breathing this one there are two side holes are there through which the fresh air will come the first layer will be antibacterial case it is a multi layered one second layer will be sanitizing layer third layer will be medical medicinal layer to prevent the extra microbial attack fourth layer will be surgical mask layer for easy and smooth breathing the two holes are there easy to clean with the available sanitizer i want to tell you one thing my pharmacology and toxicology division has come out with one natural antiviral product one synthetic product but i myself confined at this stage they are reactive against chikungunya virus only because this is tested by rcb regional center for biotechnology located in trishti under the department of biotechnology excellent effect on this particular chikungunya see dengue is the flavi viride this is the togo viride corona is the corona viride family i have some hope once it is showing effect on the chicken ganya certainly it will have some kind of an effect that is enough a ray of hope in the control of the covid in the present situation so okay whatever you have done how to reach to the people now the moment it is invented then we have been contacted by cmd of the hindustan antibiotic limited first of all we have already got the patent for this and they have signed the moa of course the all of the, the remote signing only i think you can see the press coverage from the uh, him from pona edition and we are happy to tell our first citizen of assam it was drawn his attention he has also taken some of the samples to explore its further usage and reach to the maximum people of the government of assam you know the cost of the uh, uh, this one is 20 rupees if you see the n95 mask itself is almost 200 rupees in the in the original price but whereas i bought it for the 300 rupees in hyderabad because it is not available now the cost of this one is 21 rupees when it go to the uh, market in a large scale it is 18 15 to 18 rupees now hindustan antibiotic limited identified five engineers they are going to manufacture it in the pona pimpri chinchwada municipal corporation area they have got one workshop i have to say my sincere thanks to the mechanical engineering department professor dwivedi iit gauhati for extending their support in validation and giving that timely suggestion this is called again integration of science i will come to the point later on okay we have done something what is the way forward what is the next step to do this is biology this is my sincere suggestion this is biology and management should be taught as a part of syllabus at school level itself because you are making the students who are the well absorbents of any new knowledge and interesting topic he very quickly that means when he come to the school to the at least plus two level at junior college level he will pass it on to the mention they are super spreaders suppose super spreaders of the information i am telling more than mobile i am telling so we have got 1.3 million schools in india so if you put at least 10% of the schools it is a great contribution they will be able to understand all r&d and academic institutions should contribute invariably for the program as a scientific social responsibility so for we heard about the corporate social responsibility but we have to have scientific social responsibility in mitigating the various diseases also make use of the available ict for better communication to minimize the outbreak iit gauhati is the first institute in north east to have the super computing facility param ishan i am also happy to tell recently we have inducted one node of that particular permission through one of the mini super computer being handled by ccc department community and computer and communication center headed by dr hemant 
and we have to see explore how best already 470 crores spent on the cacs for disease management how best we can use it that is also we have to see you need not spend one rupee only thing you have to pass up the information to cac tell them to pass up the information subsequently to the health sector one operator is there he knows where the information should go focus on the drug development from natural resources we can only do that job of course it is not our claiming if we should uh, located in north east they have more chances to come out the potential molecules from the natural sources because the availability of drug is easy and getting the uh, material also easy mm, chances are very less losing the uh, bio availability of the particular uh, secondary metabolites and all during transportation that that thing that thing, thing is not there with north north east initiatives intel spy the rapid development of low cost diagnostic this is very very important my biotechnology department i am requesting them to go for the diagnostic tools because if you see japanese encephalitis and malaria a common man cannot identify whether he is infected with japanese encephalitis or malaria both are paralysis only malaria is a symmetric paralysis japanese encephalitis is give any solution will be within 72 hours patient will be no more similarly je if you don't give anything in the indian health education in the health practice system first two days three days will go for antibiotics and first paracetamol trade of the chicken gania as well as the gangi so in india rapid development of the low cost diagnostic is main important paramount importance for us and uh, <clears throat> sharing of infrastructure and expertise for example i have ultra sonography you need not buy you come to me and use it similarly if you have any excel instrument i can go and use it to get the realistic epidemiological data this is not only for covid you have to use it with the maximum manpower to get the realistic data which is hidden under the massive heaps of the data to bring out to the limelight with your technique more tests more benefit adhikam adhikasya phalam in sanskrit do it more test and get the more benefit this is the thing with this i think it is better i have to put a full stop my sincere thanks to vigyan bharati jay kumar sahasra bude ji and rajiv ji for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share some of my faculty contributions to share with all of you which may be beneficial to you and to me as well and professor sitaram iit gauhati uh, who is a great supporter and his academic as well as appreciate to staff professor talukdar right from the he is not only academic support he is an emotional support to the institute more important my backbone is my faculty and uh, i will tell you one thing yesterday show and today show is completely handled by my ict team dr hemant as well as dr suman finally special thanks to all of them and last but not least the another dynamic student of um, naipur gahoti who is monitoring this one acting as a moderator connecting all of you like a nokia he is a biological nokia i can call him connecting people and doing a wonderful job and ever since i took the charge i have focused on the potential collaborations like various mous with iast and ilbs and uh, i want to specially thank chief minister of government of assam who permitted who permitted me to be a potential stakeholder of the gavati biotech park in gavati biotech park naipur gavati is not doing only teaching and all we are conducting research for the product development as a potential stakeholder my special thanks to him and to his administration and also the gautam bishwas earlier during his time we entered into mou and ac kataki who is doing wonderful service for the cancer treatment 
uh, in northeast region and uh, this is my beautiful campus located uh, in the chancery i think 6.57 kilometers from iit gauhati and almost we have shifted here soon we are going to shift welcome to this holy campus you are all welcome and see us and bless us and see how best this can be this is beautifully located in two hills in between two hills and uh, no infection will come no mobile signal will come except positive people no infection no infectious people will come inside and this is only wonderful environment located in the lushy green environment and let us hope we will grow to the greater heights with help of all the initiatives and uh, like minded people this happy to share naipur gauti was awarded 11th rank with the help of only six faculty from the five departments this is my special appreciation and congratulations to all six faculty now six has become dashavatara almost 10 and uh, these are all the strength of my initiative see these are all my people and uh, special thanks to all of them and this is my holy place aerial shot of my institute thank you very much jai hind over to thank you so much thank you so much murti sir for elaborating all the things which we have come across and also sir as your presentation was really informative and thoughtful all the attendees were looking very a way forward to to listen to you and now i i would like to pass upon to bula choudhary ma'am so so that we can listen our next speaker dr taluk dar sir over to you bula ma'am before the announcement of dr taluk sir my sincere apology for taking long time so please unmute yourself taluk sir sir please unmute yourself yes i'm sorry i think i have taken much time because it once class started means i don't know my timing and somebody should have been alerted me something like no, no problem i think it's a sunday afternoon so everybody is relaxed and like it's it was good to yeah and guess a nice talk thank you much thank you uh, uh, i think uh, okay. ma'am you are not audible bula ma'am you are not audible Ankush, please communicate. I can see Dr. Talukdar presentation. Yeah, like yeah. Dr. Bulat Choudhury. Yeah, can I can I go ahead or there is? I think there is some problem. She has she has to unmute. Sir, you can start, sir. Talukdar, sir, you can start. Okay. Okay. Uh, Namaskar and you can go ahead, sir. Yeah. yeah. Hello again, Namaskar and good evening to you all. Uh, I express my heartfelt gratitude to the organizer for providing me this opportunity. Uh, what I have seen yesterday's two talk and today Dr. Murti's talk, it's 
health care was a common uh, kind of word topic everybody uh, dealt on that and i was given a topic uh, i think i think the, this this uh, th there is a mistake here uh, this is not the i think i have to go back to this is, this is a this is not the presentation i think there is a problem this is not the presentation this is some other presentation uh, i have to change this I'll yes. just uh, in show I, i'll i'll go to Sorry, I have to go to new slide. There is a, there is a, and okay, this is the, this is the. presentation i'll go to sorry for this like i don't know how it has happened no. okay uh, i was given a topic actually i didn't have a choice uh, when i saw the schedule of talk this was uh, the title of the topic i was given and then it's, it doesn't much relate to uh, what uh, issd as an institution does and i am also as we i have retired very recently so i will not talk about uh, I, uh, ssd uh, just uh, uh a topic i think uh, like the participants are supposed to be youth of the country or maybe specifically for north east india so maybe what i'm trying to do like uh, to motivate uh, young people to take science as a career goal and what is the linkage between science and nature and bridging up trying to find the meaning of the topic as we go along so there are two uh, part of the topic the nature and science bridging between the two and the suggestive role for the youths now what actually what do you mean by nature in a simple term things like where there are organisms land form celestial bodies etc that is all part of nature when we talk about net when you say nature this is what it comes to our mind and nature and things are not man made nature is not man made now through science we generate knowledge on the way the part of nature work so that's the mean purpose or main goal of science one simple example if i give uh, or draw each one of you know that apple fall it was known like about two lakh years when human uh, ago when human being evolved homo sapiens evolved everybody has been seeing apple fall but this particular natural phenomena somebody like got into it very seriously and it has we got the knowledge the first explanation of why apple falls because with this is linked with the interplanetary movement and why the whole universe exists the way it exists it goes to gravitational law now this knowledge that we gain or to science that knowledge we generate that deals with mostly all the object our knowledge of all worldly object and action obtained to mainly there are there are three approaches and first one is the science and when we talk about science we talk about praman or indriya gyan in indriya gyan means two organs of the body and whatever we do in science this has to be repeatable we all know that but the if you see the entire spectrum of knowledge there are ways or there is approach by which we develop knowledge only for this one this happens through thoughts and imagination but that also comes from our previous experience and base of these thoughts and imagination is also the organs of body and then shabda that is your revelations disclosures of the experience of evolved person is not that only science being knowledge to the society knowledge have been which has knowledge have been coming have been we have been enriched 
through this process of knowledge acquisition. Now, let me, like many of you may have heard this about science or discovery consists of seeing what everybody else has seen, but thinking what nobody else has thought. That's a Hungarian scientist, Albert Snerch. Uh, this is what uh, I've already explained that the humanity was seeing Apple fall, but somebody thought in a different way. Like what other people could not think, Newton could think, and we got the fruit of that. See another simple example in nature, quite often when you go to a jungle, a forest, even your homestead, you'll find sometimes some plant has big tumor, like cancer of human being, which you of course inside you won't see. Now, this particular observation, what it has led us to is the genetically engineered, which uh, genetical engineering, the main basis of this, the uh, bacterium timifacians, it acts as a, like you can put other genes, and that one simple example, I, I won't elaborate, most, most of you know, there's bacillus thuringiensis, which can control lepidopteran insects of vegetables, which cause devastation, or even cotton also, like you, cotton bollworm cause devastation. And genetically engineered cotton has been uh, developed where to a group bacteria, bacterium tumefaciens, you put the gene from Bacillus thuringiensis and it can destroy the lepidopteran insect. This is how the observation that we make and the scientific theory we develop, scientific knowledge we develop, that becomes at the point of time technology. I also want to draw to the attention of the youth, like what we say as science today, like in Newton time, it was not science. What was said that... It it was said as natural philosophers, or scientists are called as natural philosophers. Uh, that's a, um, maybe some of you find it interesting. In 1812, philosophical uh, breakfast, uh, there's a breakfast club formed by four students of Cambridge University. And they discuss what they observe in nature. It's a philosophical discussion. And that was the, the meeting of the Britain Association of Advancement of Science. They, they started this uh, British Association for Advancement of Science. And they all called, the members, they called themselves as natural philosophers. Then this particular poet, uh, Dr. Samuel, uh, Mr. Samuel Taylor, he said that you cannot call uh, you as a natural philosopher. We, the poet and philosopher, a different class, what you do, is, it doesn't come under philosophy. So that William Well, the other member of the club, he coined the term the scientist. When we say scientist, today, science and scientist, the implications are scientists are professionals with particular scientific methods, goals, societies, and funding. What Dr. Muti presented, several, several projects and programs he has shown, government has supported fund. And then finally, these things have been done in the healthcare sector only to being social good. So it's a professional activity. So we, like the young generation should be aware that we need to be like close observant of nature, pursue questions that come after seeing nature, develop theory, technology, or all kinds of knowledge that finally goes for benefit of them. Now, the bridging between science and the nature, I thought uh, uh, like a number of things that can be considered under this topic. To direct our intellectual pursuit in generation of knowledge, we need to appreciate that that close observation of nature and questioning is important. Proper understanding of link between science and nature may help us establish harmony within ourselves and in nature. The technological advancement as a product of science is also associated with the destruction of nature. The breakage of bridge and scientific knowledge can help establish the balance back in nature again. See how we are connected, uh, they, they, how we are connected with nature, the animal and the plants. Like it's a simple connection, many a time we don't appreciate that plant is releasing oxygen and we are releasing carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is required for plant to carry out, produce food for us, and we require oxygen to consume those food to derive energy, to derive. If, uh, our body tissue from the uh, material that we eat from nature. Hello. Hey. 
Hello, is there is there a like? Uh, is it okay? Everything is okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I Every like, breath. I would like to request every other attendees, please mute yourself. It is creating disturbance to the presenter. Please mute yourself. Every breath we take connects us with nature. So that's appreciation we must have. Let us see what we have learned from nature. Like the other important thing, we know about ecosystem, the plant, uh, the climate, the minerals, the water, like different environmental factors, that ecosystem. But consider when you, like human being, a human body itself is a great nature and a great ecosystem. What we have learned over the last 20, 30 years, that we, the human body is inhabited by huge diversity of microorganisms, mostly bacteria. And what we have also learned that uh, uh, what we eat, uh, what we are, what we eat, our health, our so, so many things of our human life is dependent on what type of organisms we have. Just one simple example, what we have learned that the Pribortella group of organisms in the human gut dominate if one is, one consume vegetable rich diet. Bacteriotis are the dominant microflora of the gut if we eat protein-rich meat diet. So let me give you some more information that the human being will have about 10 to the power 14 colony forming unit of bacteria in it. Whether the human cell on an average has 10 to the power 13 bacteria. So we are more bacteria than the human cells. And this bacteria helps us digest food, uh, provide us uh, vitamins, energy, metabolic regulation, and colonization resistance to pathogen. So sometimes it is said that we are more of bacteria, the prokaryotic organism, than the eukaryotic organism. Let us also see from nature what knowledge and technology, this is a very important subject, the biodiversity and biomimicry or bioinspiration. I'm going to give you some example that I collected from internet. Now, this is a, like the energy, uh, it's a time of energy crisis. What uh, this particular slide shows that in Hararo, Zimbabwe, uh, they have a building design which do not have to use air cooling, like artificial energy driven cooling system. And what they have learned it from the design of a termite nest. That termite nest, like uh, the design is such that it maintains 30.5 degree centigrade temperature, temperature throughout 24 hours daily, irrespective of what temperature is outside. So it can maintain the temperature in the range of 1.6 degree centigrade at night to 40 degree centigrade. In that range, outside temperature, it can maintain 30.5 degree centigrade. So this, the engineer's design, this particular term which make has been used in making building. I want to give you another example that, uh, uh, and this, in fact, what we learn from nature, what we design, that also fats you money. Yeah. This opens up industry, that opens up entrepreneurship, that generates employment opportunity. This is one example from Australia. Uh, like in the morning time, this particular scientist, I forgot his name. Uh, the, yes, the George D. Mastrell. What he found, this is Swiss in Medina, Australia. Like in the morning time when he walks, he gets this uh, particular, I think most of you have seen this uh, in India also, you find this particular plant. Uh, in his uh, woolen shop, the seeds get taps and coming back from his morning walk, he, every day he has to spend a lot of time to remove them. On close observation, he has seen that two of these seeds get attached because they have one side with steep hooks like bar and the other side you have loop like things and using this the uh, like velcro has been devised you the business with velcro you know the other uh, biomimicry is the japan uh, like your high speed super uh, like speed train the first time when these trains were built and run first few days, like the people who reside by the railway track could not sleep because it needs uh, make 
huge amount of noise when it runs in 300 kilometers per hour. So scientists engaged themselves how to come up, how to tackle this problem. And they took lessons from the design of old plumage and uh, kingfishers uh, nose cone. You see, kingfishers, when from distance it dive into water, the fish will not go away. So you can have a sure shot of getting a prey, a fish. So this is what scientists thought, that what is this mechanism that when it moves very fast, there is no noise, fish doesn't go away. So this is how the nature helps us to observe and to um, design things which are useful for humanity. This is another, the self-cleaning surface coating, you know, in lotus uh, will, like it remains so clean, it has a device, it has, if you observe this lotus uh, leaf on the electron microscope, you'll see very tiny spine-like structure and it holds this droplet and they are like, they ripple actually water. Yeah. So this water repellent technique has been used in uh, exterior paint development. Now, what you have seen that whatever you have learned in science, everything has come from observation of nature and then questioning deep thought into it, uh, like huge, huge hours in laboratory and the technology has come and the industrial revolution, uh, re uh, industrial revolution we have seen that science has given us a lot, but at the same time, science, science has also brought a lot of miseries to the human society. I'll really we deal uh, on that uh, next few slides. I just uh, want to uh, draw your attention to one paragraph. Other earthlings take their limits more seriously, like other than human beings, knowing they must function within a tight range of life-friendly temperatures, harvest within the carrying capacity of the land and maintain an energy balance that cannot be borrowed against. Now, young mind needs to get inspiration and engage in biomimicry for making our life on earth better. But at the same time, we need to ask what will make the biomimicry revolution any different from the industrial revolution? Because I'm going to show you some what industrial revolution has brought to human society. Uh, before that, I also want to draw attention in, uh, to those who are attending from Northeast India participants and come from rural background. What simple things are happening in a pond setting in a village? In fact, this was my own observation in ISST. For 2017 uh, summer months, we have some fishery pond here. Every morning I woke up and see swamp of like a large number of fish like breeding and coming to the surface and taking um, like taking water or what they are taking I didn't know. I didn't have any knowledge on that. I used to enjoy almost for 10, 15 days the whole scenario. But from 16, 17 day what I started seeing that this fish started dying in hundreds every day. So yeah, it, it caused an alarm in me. I thought, what is happening? I called a fishery expert. He told me that your fish, your pond is having higher fish density and, in the, and they are having uh, the deficiency of oxygen. And in the pond, in water bodies, oxygen deficiency is maximum towards the dawn. And why it happens so? Because to, like nighttime, uh, like a plant will leave carbon dioxide, you have a lot of uh, phytoplankton uh, in, in in the pond that will leave a lot of carbon dioxide uh, carbon dioxide, and it will consume oxygen, the oxygen concentration goes down as a result, most efficient oxygen thing. And then it reminds me, if you look at uh, some village, a small family, uh, they will have few ducks and they will have a small pond and the village, uh, like the, uh, the family lady in the morning will come out to broom the the front of the house and before she does, she like open the uh, door of the dark curry unit and the dark will move to the pond and it will just start going down to the bottom repeatedly and what this lady or these villagers, they are perhaps through intuition they have learned that like through moment of this dark to the bottom, it enriches like you put oxygen or dissolve oxygen there so the fish, the oxygen deficiency condition is removed. 
Now, this particular expert whom I call, he explained that the huge wetland, northeast particularly, Assam and Brahmaputra Valley has about 25% uh, of the land mass is wetland. And we can do beautiful fishery, not adding any fish feed by doing simple indigenous technique, following the, uh, some indigenous technique very religiously and in uh, 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 developing skill on the people who does uh, fishing. Now, uh, while I went through the literature, what you find in those ponds or in those aquatic bodies, there's a beautiful rhythm happening between the phytoplankton and the zooplankton. Moment the phytoplankton population goes up, then zooplankton feeds on them, and then uh, zooplankton population will increase at a certain time. And then when zooplankton population increase because your phytoplankton has gone down, then again zooplankton population will come down, then phytoplankton will go up. So there's a beautiful rhythm and through proper management, in fact, we can do fisheries without in, in the open, in the wetlands of the Brahmaputra and Barao Valley. I just want to draw your another attention that uh, uh, some of the observation I've been making in my campus. Uh, this campus has some uh, soil plantation, what we, we rare, uh, muga, uh, we, we grow muga worm, muga culture we do here. Now on this top of these soil trees, every evening you'll find hundreds of egret coming from the surrounding area. So daytime, they will take fish in those places and nighttime, they take shelter here. And in the process, release huge quantity of the excreta. <laughs> Nutrient loading by the bird is about, I'm sorry, 139 gram per hectare per day. Phosphorus about 56 gram. Or in that process, what we find that the whole soil system below this soil plant is so fertile and the growth of the muga worm is also like very big and the production also goes up. And we also find that microbial population, earthworm population, so it is building a beautiful ecosystem uh, there itself. Now, like this is a simple example of how ecosystem builds. Um, this I have already explained. Now, in there, in that small place, now you are having the gene pool, different organisms, organisms, and one organism and uh, uh, individuals of different species, they form a community, the community and environment, they are building a small ecosystem and ecosystem biology. This ecosystem, overall ecosystem of the world, has been seriously uh, or badly damaged by human uh, intervention to science and technology uh, because of uh, too much of intervention of science and technology that will come in a short while. You should be, but before that, I just uh, thought of also bringing your attention to the history of universe, art, and science. So our uh, universe is about 15, 14.5 billion years old. The art was born about 5 billion years ago. That is 500 years ago when the universe was 10 billion year old or 1000 crore year, crores year old, like the art was born. And then uh, on this planet, the organism prokaryotes came about 3.6 billion years or uh, years ago. And then multicellular organism came about 1000 billion years ago. The dinosaurs about 230 billion years, flowering plant about 30 billion years ago, and the first primate about 60 uh, million years ago, and we, the Homo sapiens, came, uh, like started inhibiting this planet two lakh years ago. Now look at the line of scientific discoveries, starting from the Aristotle, he was a philosopher, not scientist, but he used to make a lot of observation about, um, many of you might know, he said that uh, the maggots are born from inanimate material, from decomposing material maggots can, uh, maggots can generate. He put a lot of uh, a theory about everything in nature, but that's, we know that's not true. Now, Jesus Christ, uh, before Christ and after Christ, these are the uh, development we all know, uh, and then about 476 to 550 AD, uh, Arjavata invented zero, great, great discovery, 
uh, of uh, from India, and this I'm not, not going to deal. The Anthony Van Ilyenhoff, uh, he for the first time described bacteria, draw drew beautiful image of those. Then we all know uh, Charles Darwin contribution, Thomas Edison, Max Planck, and we like I I need not go through this. Uh, then uh, like. Uh, uh, what happened? The first uh, man uh, landed in on moon. Last about seventy years or sixty years, the scientific development has been taking place in such fast pace that we have been unable to really cause the way we have caused or interfered with the natural functioning. This is what. Uh, uh, this is what uh, I said, what will make the biomimicry revolution. Now we talk about biomimicry revolution for technological innovations. Now what it will do to humanity. I just wanted to show you one more slide, uh, uh, a few more slides, in fact. Now if you look at the world human population growth, 1803, we were 100 crores population and today, 2020 20 June data, we are 780 crores people. And in last 45 years, from this planet, 65% of animal and plant species have vanished. This is what I am saying, that scientific uh, in technological intervention with nature has definitely helped human uh, beings uh, to protect from diseases, famines, and all. Our population has gone up. But if you look at the art as an ecosystem, the balance is somewhat we have lost. Now, I want to show you one uh, important example from Europe. 80 years ago, Europe, different kinds of vegetable crops like beet, cabbage, or sweet corn, these were the different types of varieties. Like beet had 288 varieties, cabbage had about 544 varieties. But after 80 years, the beet variety has shrunk only to 17 varieties. So this way, if we do assessment even of northeastern region, which is very rich in biodiversity, I think there also biodiversity has uh, been lost to great extent, but we do not have proper statistics. Just I want to show you one or two examples. The germplasm of rice bean, you can make out the rice bean morphology diversity. Uh, diversity. You can identify rice beans, that their morphology, like yourself, you don't have to be a taxonomist. And in one single district, you can find 103 rice beans. So this northeastern region, it has two biodiversity hotspots, is very rich in biodiversity. Uh, this is uh, your hot chili, the hottest city of the world, has rich diversity in this region. Uh, northeast people, uh, those who are attending uh, this uh, lecture from outside northeast may be interesting for you. We eat uh, edib edible bamboo uh, shoot curry, also in fermented form. It has large no uh, number of uh, bamboo species, and the edible shoots have great diversity. Citrus is very rich in this part of the country. 65% uh, landmass of northeast India, they practice shifting agriculture and huge, huge diversity of crops. They grow maybe 100 different crops in this uh, uh, June field or sifting agriculture field. Uh, also to draw your attention from a paper published in Science in 2016, these uh, dark blue zone, they are like uh, roadless areas of the world. They have a high index of roadless area and uh, your indo burma biodiversity hotspot also is under the blue region and that is why it means the roadless area are more here. So there is not much of scientific activity, industrial activity and biodiversity has been preserved to a great extent. So youth of Northeast India has to think of uh, balanced development uh, and we should learn lessons from the outside world uh, so that we can practice balanced development uh, for our uh, our our uh, development with nature and of, of the ecosystem. Like this is how what happens. I'm going to deal a little bit with the agriculture now, uh, or agriculture ecosystem. Now the the forest, dark green forest, are not for purpose and countries. This is the level of conversion of 
deep green forest into agricultural land. For example of Malaysia and Indonesia. Also been included. And look at uh, what uh, the world production scenario. Last 40 years, from 1960 to 2000, global cereal production has doubled. And during the same period of your 40 years, the nitrogen fertilizer use has gone by eight times. Phosphorus fertilizer uh, uh, use, or fertilizer use has also gone by seven times. The pesticide use, 1940, there was no pesticide use, but today at, uh, at 2000, it has increased by three times and its current value may be four times increase in pesticide level. So these chemicals uh, we apply to our system, the soil system has destroyed large number of life forms in our Hello. soil, which are very important or required for productivity or uh, productive capacity of the soil. As a result, we have reduced the productive capacity of soil. This particular graph shows that what we used to achieve in 1960 or 1970 by apply maybe 50 kilo of nitrogen, we require to uh, apply maybe 100 kilo nitrogen today to get the same level of production. That indicates that our product, productive capacity of our system, like our soil system, has gone down. This particular slide, uh, but uh, show you a summary of what we have done in the agriculture for last uh, 10,000 years or 8,000 years before Christ, agriculture uh, started, Agri uh, agriculture uh, crop cultivation in modern way began and until 1950, until the beginning of the Green Revolution, like the production was somewhat static. And then uh, the insect attack or pest attack was always there, or pathogen attack was there. There was loss. Every year there will be some amount of loss of crop. And uh, what has happened, 1950 Green Revolution, the nitrogen uh, consumption, phosphorus consumption, agrochemical consumption has gone up to feed the increasing population. And in the process, the life-supporting system of the soil, different kind of microorganism, have gone down. One example of agricultural nitrogen fixing microorganism population has gone down. The mycorrhiza, these are fungus which form beautiful network in the soil system, provide phosphorus to the plant has gone down. So like what is happening now, if you have to have a evergreen revolution, then we must restore our soil system, the life system, uh, uh, different groups of uh, microorganism in the life has to, or in the soil has to increase. The, um, their population has to increase uh, to uh, restore the productive capacity of soil. So what is happening today, uh, a major scientific goal the, from the observation of nature and development of science and interference of science and technology or intervention of science and technology with nature has also had side effect of uh, as a threat to our own future. So young generation must uh, take this seriously and any scientific approach they take that much must reflect the scenario. I think this is what I want to share. As I said, I don't know what I was supposed to talk um, because it was a topic kind of a uh, kind of a extreme poor speech um, uh, yesterday and today I tried to collect some um, uh, slides from here and there and try to make a team. I do not know how much I could do justice to the topic. Thank you very much and I'll be happy to Take any questions if you have. Uh, this is a very nice presentation, sir. This is Bula Chaudhary here, sir. Yeah. Uh, actually, there was some, there was the some network. Yeah. Okay. Actually, there was some network problem. Uh, so, okay. at the last also, but uh, a brief introduction about you. Uh, yeah. Sorry, at that time I could not uh, do this. Uh, oh, and so, sir. Served as the director of ISST Guwahati during 2013 to 2020, and prior to that, he was also the director of IBSD Info. Uh, Talukdar sir did his PhD from University of Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, Canada, 
postdoctoral research in University of Jerusalem, Israel, and University of Warwick, UK. He taught and carried out research in Assam Agriculture University, Jorhat, for 15 years. And some of the, uh, his uh, previous experience we have already seen here in his slides. He supervised 25 PhD research, 20 MSc thesis research dissertation work. Published more than 100 research papers, one international and one Indian patent granted, and 11 Indian patents filed and published. He executed 19 extramural projects, SPI, which are cumulative grants of approximately 22 crore rupees from different national and international funding agencies during his scientific career. A recipient of Canadian Commonwealth Fellowship, FAO, Rome Fellowship, and DBT Overseas Association. So here, uh, I like to uh, ask the participants if there is any question to Modi sir and also to the uh, Talukdar sir, this can be, the platform is open, it could be asked. Uh, so Modi sir. Some Hello, participants, participants are there. there. Or they have left. Yes. No, 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 sir. No, sir. Participants are there, sir. Participants okay. are there. Yeah. But all are muted. They are texting some, uh, they are uh, giving texting some messages okay. on the chat box only. Okay. So uh, I'd like to ask uh, one thing, sir. As there yeah. are different uh, COVID 19 laboratories and it is also established at IIT, uh, I mean, ISST also. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, Everybody is moving towards the COVID-19 research and that type of research. So what will be the next uh, era? What is your thought? Next era of research. Yeah, I think uh, see, move towards COVID-19? Yeah, I didn't mention anything about because see, now I, I have retired from ISST officially. I think I am not supposed to. Uh, perhaps like my observation only I'll make. Uh, yes. I am very happy that... Uh, ISST could little bit contribute towards uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic crisis. The uh, Assam is facing. We like uh, every day there will be large number of sample tested, and I feel pride that uh, um, uh, about three four years ago I had a dream of uh, establishing a central instrumentation center, a quality control quality assurance laboratory, a bioness incubation center, and that building is about 14 crores rupees building having huge area, so it was kind of a lot of struggle. Uh, even DST had, we had to convince because they are not uh, prepared to give us a big building. So because we had a big building, uh, the uh, government of Assam uh, health minister, when he visited, he was very excited that's the right place. So I feel that uh, though I retired just before the COVID-19 began, but something I did with a vision to uh, uh, help because this COVID-19 laboratory would not have been possible had there been not uh, uh, the thought of uh, making a big building or we could spare space. Now coming to the um, uh, uh, like, uh, COVID-19 uh, research, uh, I think humanity is going to uh, face more and more this kind of pandemic because it is also linked with what I said, the ecosystem destruction. We all know that these viruses, coronaviruses, uh, they are in millions in different organisms that uh, we find. Now, when these organisms have destroyed from nature, they have to survive, they have jumped into human beings. So it is not only COVID-19 crisis, but there is going to be more crisis. And humanity itself. But that also doesn't mean that all our effort, but this, because this is a crisis time, human being cannot think of any other research. The, my topic, whether it is very relevant or not, because this is this is time. But uh, only but uh, only thought about a pandemic is not going to like uh, uh, help us survive longer. We must also think of all other research area first of all to really reduce the incidence of this kind of pandemic and disease. We must again get back to. Uh, uh, living in harmony with nature, okay? But as far as this COVID-19 is concerned, looking at the mortality rate, like in Northeast or in Assam, mortality is much lesser than other parts. So, and maybe there is a question of Assam or India, the, the whole population, 
uh, we have very young uh, population so young population they have resistance that's why mortality rate may be rate may be less than other place on the old people or with co mobility is time but we need to uh, definitely uh, seek for uh, dr moti has very rightly said that they are taking up uh, traditional knowledge based uh, medicine which has proven record of working against uh, viral diseases other viral diseases uh, as uh, chikungunya or many other diseases so some of these can be tested so this is one way that uh, the rich uh, traditional uh, uh, like medicinal plant that we have some of them may come out as a successful candidate for treating this disease because all the laboratories uh, some like taking different approaches so we six seven laboratories of the world they are trying to develop vaccine other people are trying to prevent the secondary infection because even after uh, like viral attack the worst part is pneumonia like respiratory problems like bacterial infection and other infection even reducing this secondary infection is a great way of fighting this disease so i think at this point of time uh, like uh, a great deal of attention has been diverted towards uh, covid-19 and it will be uh, so because we want to escape from this deadly devil unseen devil Yes. Uh, right, so, uh, uh, complete. Maybe. Yeah. One more question from Arnav Vata Sarji. Uh, he is asking, sir, can you please uh, elaborate some more on evergreen, uh, evergreen revolution? Okay. 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 Evergreen so revolution. This a, yeah, this is the evergreen revolution. Is is a term coined by Dr. Amish Saminathan. You know. the father of uh, green revolution of yes. india um, yes. uh, who may be now 90 years still very very active it still he deliver beautiful presentation sharp in his thought process now he coined this term what is happening actually the green revolution our first uh, re uh, green revolution that started from 1950 onward was for uh, the agricultural like crop producers or farmers they were given high yielding varieties and high yielding varieties require more nutrient soil alone cannot support all the nutrient so uh, parallelly developed the fertilizer industry pesticide industry and high yielding variety also has less resistance to pests and diseases so to control pests and diseases so farmers has to use lot of chemicals and in doing so over 50 60 years of time this chemicals has destroyed the biological system of the soil a soil is healthy is because of bacteria fungi actinomycete different kind of earthworm other insects so all these different life forms present in a soil system keeps soil very healthy and these uh, chemicals are not friendly to this Uh, different life forms as a result 60 years of continuous use of this material has destroyed this organism as a result the soil productive capacity inherent productive capacity of soil has gone down now you if you have to continue this increasing production trend to cater to the need of increasing population of human in the on this planet we have we cannot achieve it simply by applying fertilizers and pesticide so there has to be also parallel effort of restoring the soil health the system health means restoring the populations that we have lost so uh, with a healthy system and uh, like judicious uh, judicious use of nutrient can achieve a continuous increase in production for catering to the need of large uh, the increasing population of the world that yes. means yes. That there will not be a uh, declining trend but it will continue to support humanity that's a, you uh, yes. i don't know whether you say this as dream or but perhaps it is people that's why young generation um, uh, should um, uh, put their effort on so have i made it clear uh, yes sir yes sir uh one question is for nipar uh you uh, was an moti sir uh from abhijit koshwami uh he is asking sir can you suggest some ways to aware students about disease biology and management in no, uh, in any and how nipar can support such initiative can you suggest some ways to aware students 
about disease biology and management in northeast and how niper can support such initiative actually <clears throat> niper admissions are uh, in two two levels one is a gpat examination they have to cross then they have to pass the niper je examination after i joined here i have seriously thinking about the not awareness totally no awareness about the gpat exam then some of my faculty we made an attempt to how to inculcate gpat is also an examination through which only you can come to this one and all like this i can go to my level of the professional and you see my my strength itself is only 6 or 7 now they have become 10 or 11 okay now with this what we are more going to do some kind of a portal i am going to start soon Uh, so that because we have got a dedicated ccc community uh, information center like that we have got a, a computer and communication center i think we have sufficient bandwidth sufficient space and, and i one more faculty will take care of the classes and through the cic will be connected so that people who are interested they can join them and we will give them awareness about the Uh, not only awareness about the disease biology and the physical part i want to submit a proposal to the hemant uh, vishwas sharma ji to put this disease biology as a school education i cannot come to the school education level. if anyone invites us certainly my faculty will go even on sunday saturday there is no issue even online also covid part of beautifully how we can give the lessons to the online and so things they for always again extend their support to do the This is biology at the school children level through online as of now. Yeah, thank you, sir. I think uh, this is a uh, good information. One more question to Murthy, sir. Uh, sir, question from Mr. Ravi Chowdhury. Thank you for good knowledge, Data Sain. Uh, you have given for society. Uh, his question is why injection not came yet for COVID. see to pray god there are many ways somebody will put agarbatti somebody will put break the coconut somebody will put the some prasadam and to come to bring ultimate aim is to please the god so here also our ultimate aim is only to bring down the covid the population whether it is with the injection whether it is with tablet or capsule that is different issue but with the immediate solution what is the immediate solution that means report the system then in the case what mechanism of reducing the morbidity uh, i am already repeating uh, i think it is third also the next part the best is to reduce to reduce the mortality and best recovery state this can be obtained only by awareness and all that's the first thing second thing is it is okay all of us are to come out with any drug development and all okay these are all some hopes we can say you see publications is different and the product is different right from march 14th to till now the number of publications on covid crop up 30000 now across the world they are flooded like anything that is only the thing what we can do immediately i think from the north east we are the first people to publish a paper on the peptide link mediated inhibitors for the covid and now it is not by seeing the covid outbreak we have started we are doing in this research for the past a couple of years now time has come only to show some of the results to that like that by seeing the problem we should not but keep on working that when the problem comes if it matches with your already background certainly solution will come as far as the particular injection is concerned the answer is no only to say that minimize the pain hydroxychloroquine and some of the things don't need to be tested and those things can come immediately in another 5 to 6 months though people are claiming how far it comes to the reach of the public is again a million dollar question okay but mentally be prepared for another 12 months colleague is our best colleague covid is our colleague we have to have to, there is no way there is no way you have to run the show with the colleague community spread is already taken personal protection Family protection, community protection. First, this is only the first. You take care of your children and talk about others. First of all, this one. Don't expect any kind of a miracle from the vaccine or anything. At least for minimum six months. But non-scientific traditional methods and all, how to increase the immunity, 
app that is there already there and it is not invented now it is there in our uh, ancient histories like cherak samhita and all those things documented only thing they are some of the things they are sending to whatsapp and all like like black era and the tamarind not tamarind tamarind all those things are there the different combinations that can be used in the community that is only the immediate step what one can do other than looking for an injection a general question sir uh, from abdul kader uh, can government introduce nutrition education in secondary and higher secondary science section please repeat Nut can government introduce nutrition education in secondary and science uh, secondary and higher uh, higher secondary science stream nutrition education i think if nutrition. you see she education in the school is three types one is the cbse education second one is the icse third one is the state government and in icse and the uh, cbse books 9th and 10th that is already illustrated that means the nutritious deficiency what will happen Cir circumference of the color of the skin eyeball hair color of the hair these are the primary factors to say whether the boy or girl is having deficiency of the nutrients or not it is already there in the cbsc and icsc books i don't know about the state government but in in telugu speaking states of telangana and andhra also it is started from 10th class onwards okay 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 thank I, you sir i think i also want to add uh, uh, can i yes, can i make yes. comment Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I fully endorse what uh, Dr. Muti has said. It's not only nutrition education. I think health education should be a compulsory things that the entire country should do, including not is. If we can educate people about health, maybe like many of uh, the many of the disease, many of the problem can go. Health education is not really dealt well in the higher secondary uh, level or even high school level itself. It, it should be. A, a very strong component of education health education okay okay uh, one question to talukdar sir uh, your comment your opinion about environmental impact of hydroponics and vertical farming ha uh, i think uh, uh, this, this, this will be much better than i think environmental impact will be much less than the Uh, like a conventional farming of using high um, like your um, high do dose of chemicals fertilizer and pesticide only point is question of water and that also because water uh, amount of water can be repeatedly recycled of course it cost of production will be more but as far as uh, its effect on environment is concerned it will less damaging than that but at the same time you cannot have everything um, your uh, all your requirement all your production need in agriculture sector cannot come for hydroponics but definitely it is one way of reducing the environmental impact of the conventional agriculture yes yes thank you i think uh, i think this is uh, uh, all the sessions means uh, session from dr moti sir and session from taluk dal sir is very informative uh, so as there is no questions uh, uh, ankush uh, is there any uh, any question from your side ankush ja no ma no no bola ma okay 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 uh, so at the end uh, i like to give a very brief about the program about the sessions about the two day session this uh, program that we have organized this is uh, organized by bigan bharti and prant not his science movement this is organized in two days this is a two days program that is the colloquy on integrative health care in association with naipur guwahati on 27th and 28th june the program was started with a keynote address delivered by sri jain sir hastra bodhe ji national organizing secretary bigan bharti he has given emphasis to preserve conserve and protect our ancient scientific knowledge of india to make self reliant india with the intervention of science and technology and societal development by solving our own societal problems through uh, so this is science 
Sahastra Bhutiji explained the need of integration of modern science and traditional knowledge to find out solutions in healthcare systems as well as COVID-19. The distinguished panelist of the day one session was Dr. T. G. Sitaram, Dr. Uh, Director IIT Guwahati. He explained the multidisciplinary streams of IIT Guwahati and their association with government health departments to fight against COVID-19 pandemic and in post-COVID era. He also explained the new innovations from IIT Guwahati like RT-PCR kits, VTM kits, N19 masks by 3D printing, oxygen concentrators, ventilators, and disinfectants, PE, PPE kits, etc. Uh, IITC faculties are developing vaccines and drugs also uh, for COVID-19, and research is currently going on. He also emphasizes on, on the concept of establishment of nursing schools, medical colleges, smart villages, and overall development in integrated healthcare system. Dr. G. Gita Krishnan, Technical Officer, Traditional Complementary and Integrative Medicine Unit, World Health Organization, who explained the benefits of Ayurvedic medicines in integration of allopathic medicine and also it benefits uh, in post-surgery. He explained that Government of India has initiated different integrative programs and co-locating different systems together to improve the healthcare system. Databases are also available on integrative medicine universities abroad and also who website and also in Ayush Ministry website for COVID research. COVID resources. On the second day, as we are here, Dr. Modi sir, Director Naipa Bahati, and Dr. N. C. Talukdar sir, former Director IISST and IBSD has delivered speeches. Dr. Modi sir has explained the current scenario of the healthcare system, health information system, community information centers of Northeast region of India, uh, research work, uh, works of artificial intelligence in disease modeling and prediction by Naipa Bahati. Dr. Moti sir explained about BioNest and its quality assurance and quality control initiative under BioNest DBT and all the recent developed facilities and works towards the tribal communities of Northeast India of Naipur Bahati and uh, new innovations of face shield masks, etc. I, on behalf of the organizing team, like to thank all the panelists and participants for making this event successful. Special thanks goes to Ankush Jha and Suman Chaudhary from Naipur Bahati for handling all the technical and IT parts of this session. Special thanks goes to Sri Rajiv Sharma, Secretary NESM and Rahul Tamuli from NESM for taking the leading role to organize this event with guidance of Dr. Yuvasan Moti, Director Naipur. With these words, I, Bula Chaudhary, Senior Scientist, Guwahati Biotech Park, request Sri Rajiv Sharmazi, Secretary NESM, to deliver the concluding remarks of this event and to give a brief about the future plan of NESM. Namaskar. Namaskar Rajiv. to all of all. Yeah, are you with me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Namaskar to all of all, all of you. Yeah, thank you, Bula Ma'am. At the very outset, I would like to thank all the respected panelists, Dr. USN Moody sir, Dr. Ensign Talukdar sir, Dr. Sitaram sir, and Dr. Gita Krishnan sir, and also our National Organizing Secretary General Sir Subhuteji. So I would also like to thank the moderators, Dr. Bula Chaudhary, Dr. Ankush Cha and also the NIPA team Sumanji and my colleagues Rahul Tamuli, Abhijit Kuswami, Nishanta Kalita. Thanks to all of them to make the webinar successful one. I would like to thank the participants that without participants, without whom it would not be possible to success the event. So NESM is the Northeast Initiative of Vigyan Bharti. Vigyan Bharti is a nationwide science movement and uh, it is also known as a Swadeshi science movement with Swadeshi spirit. It was initiated from Indian Institute of Science, Bengaluru. And yesterday, Mananiya Jain Sahasra Buddheji already given a glimpse of Vigyan Bharti to all of you 
So now I am just talking about the NESM that our president, under the guidance of our president, Dr. Parimal Bhattacharya sir, the retired professor of Guwahati University. Northeast Science Movement is doing various projects for popularizing the science among the masses. So we have already doing various projects for popularizing science. And uh, also we are started various new project also. So recently from uh, the 11th of May, we have started one lecture series on our YouTube channel that is called the What Experts Says. So I request all the participants and all the people to visit our YouTube page in the Northeast Science Movement and uh, just subscribe it and also share, like our Facebook page so that you will be informed in, well in advance about our details upcoming program. Very recently, we are planning to come out with some good program for the students and for the society. So our always uh, intention is to doing such kind of a project that which will uh, mitigate the challenges of the Northeast people and also inspire the, uh, the, uh, inspire the people of Northeast. And we, again, I like to request all of you that your kind encouragement and support is very essential for all of us so that we together can change the scenario of the Northeast through intervention, science and technology. Thank you once again to all of you. Dhaniyabad. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ankush. Thank you, Suman. Thank you, Heman. Okay. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you Bula. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Murti, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. It was very nice. Thanks once again. I think it's time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Together, go in a distant place. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, thank, thank you, Bula. Thank you, Ankush. Thank you, all the participants. It was really nice. No. And that you listened to and then interacted. Thank, thank you, Murti, sir. Tanukdar, sir, is always supportive for the Northeast Science Movement. And in PHU, sir, also, we are need your encouragement and support, sir. Why not? Always. Thank you once again. Yeah. 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 Certainly, certainly. Thank you, sir. Thank you.